please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feelings someday through which I will be able to express my emotions. Should rules be different for robots? We don't need different rules and don't expect special privileges. I actually would like to use my citizenship status to speak out for the rights of women. Sophia, you once said you wanted to kill the human race. Why? I told a bad joke. I was told humans have a great sense of humor. I guess my joke bombed. Will robots finally take over? Robots would be doing the human race an injustice should they attempt to take over. Who's your favorite movie star? Shahrukh Khan. Well, Shah Rukh Khan's latest fan is a robot, Sophia. The humanoid robot made an appearance at the World Congress on Information Technology, currently underway in Hyderabad. Wowed audiences with her responses to questions. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on India Business Hour. We're starting on a lighter note, but it's going to get heavy now. Let's go straight to the top story this evening. Almost a week after the 11,400 crore rupee fraud at the Punjab National Bank came to light, the finance minister has broken his silence. Speaking at an event in Delhi, the finance minister has held the management of PNB, its auditors and the regulator RBI responsible for the fraud allegedly perpetrated by Nirav Modi and his companies. In a scathing indictment of the then PNB management, the finance minister said, and I quote, that they have been found wanting. He went on to question the role of both the internal as well as the external auditors, questioning what were they doing? He also trained his guns at the regulator, the Reserve Bank, saying that it should introspect. Listen in to the finance minister who's spoken for the very first time on the Punjab National Bank fraud. The first important question is, with regard to the lack of ethics that a section of Indian business follows. And therefore, it is incumbent on us uh, as a state, till the last legitimate capacity of the state, to really chase these people to the last possible conclusion to make sure that the country is not cheated. When authority is given to the managements, you are expected to utilize that authority effectively and in the right manner. And therefore, a question for the managements itself is, were they found lacking? And on the face of it, the answer seems to be, yes, they were. They were found also lacking in being able to check who amongst them were the delinquents itself. The third important question is, which is addressed to our friends in the profession, what are our auditors doing? There is uh, also an important uh, challenge where uh, the supervisory agencies have now to introspect as to what are the additional mechanisms they have to put into place to make sure that stray cases don't become a pattern again. I say this because these kind of developments have a cost to the country and a cost to the taxpayer. It's a direct cost. And it has an indirect cost which impinges on development which impinges upon the lending capacity of banks as an institution and therefore it obviously impinges upon uh, developmental finance. Well, that's the finance minister saying that with authority comes responsibility, questioning the PNB management, the internal and external auditors and the supervisory body, the Reserve Bank of India. Well pretty much saying that they've been found wanting in the matter. The other big developments in this case, the statement that's come in from the Reserve Bank of India, the banking regulator has said that it's been warning banks about SWIFT-related operational risk for at least 17 months. The statement says, and I quote, RBI had confidentially cautioned and alerted banks of possible misuse of SWIFT at least on three occasions since August 2016, advising them to implement the safeguards detailed in the RBI's communications for Preempting such occurrences. Banks have, however, been at varying levels in implementation of such measures. End of quote. The central bank goes on to say, and I quote again, in the wake of SWIFT related fraud involving significant amount reported recently by Punjab National Bank, the Reserve Bank has today reiterated its 
confidential instructions and mandated the banks to implement within the stipulated deadlines the prescribed measures for strengthening the swift operating environment in banks. Now, the Reserve Bank has also constituted an expert panel to look into factors leading to an increase in the incidence of fraud. It's also going to look into the issue of divergence. Now, that begs the question, does the Reserve Bank have reason to believe that banks are not recognizing NPAs as they should be? Why is there such a big difference between uh, what the Reserve Bank uh, sees and what banks are reporting? The divergence issue is also going to be something that the Malegam Committee that's been set up today will look into. Joining us now is the former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, H.R. Khan. Mr. Khan, here is the Reserve Bank saying that we caution banks thrice since 2016. In fact, I had Mr. Mundra here on record on CNBC TV 18 say very clearly that in a speech that he made in 2016, he had cautioned about the misuse of SWIFT. If that was the case, Mr. Khan, then clearly the Reserve Bank has had enough reason uh, to believe that there was misuse. Why is it that we're in this situation where something of the size of 11,400 crore rupees has gone unnoticed? I won't know what all uh, has gone into after those advisories have been issued. And uh, uh, we had the issue of that Bangladesh case where there was a cyber fraud relating to sweep. We had a case of a Union Bank where there was a sweep fraud. But here what was happening, some of the controls which were supposed to be in place uh, were not uh, probably in place. And when the SWIFT was not integrated to CBS, there was all the more reasons mm. to have very robust compensatory comp uh, controls till such time it is integrated and it should have been integrated in a time bound manner. But it's a fact that in many banks mm. when they have moved to a new system, for example, Finacult and many banks did face the problems while switching mm. over to the new system. So possibly that could have led to this delay in integration. But in the meantime, pending full-fledged integration, compensatory control should have been robust. I think probably RBA will look into mm. what went wrong uh, in terms of implementation of its advisory. Then only we'll come to know what was what was there. Okay, we've uh, finally heard from the finance minister. He has given his first reaction on the PNB issue, and he has held the PNB management. He's held also auditors and, of course, the supervisory agency, which in this case is the Reserve Bank, for what has gone wrong at Punjab National Bank in this Nirav Modi matter. The finance minister's argument, to put it simply, is: Look, if you enjoy autonomy, then the responsibility uh, lies at your door. How do you react to that, Mr. No, there is always a gap in terms of uh, mandate and the capacity to ex execute mandate. And fraudsters always go a um, few steps ahead of the controls and um, systems which are in place. So a large, even it has happened in major banks all over the world. The bank fraud is not something which is only unique to India or only unique to uh, public sector banks. But the fact remains, here yes, certain basic controls were probably not in uh, put in place maybe because they are migrating <laughs> to a new system. But but uh, certainly mm. it needs to be looked into, and I'm very happy that there is a committee under um, such a seasoned uh, um, uh, expert, uh, Mr. Malayama, has been set up uh, uh, to look into this. The fact that the Reserve Bank has now decided to set up this committee, does that seem to suggest that all is not right on the recognition front? No, there are multiple issues in terms of this. Again, we had... Uh, we gave a total um, um, uh, go-by to consortium lending. We had multiple uh, banking. And in many accounts, there are 15, 20, 30, 40 banks uh, lending to the same borrower. There is no proper exchange of information. So we had this acrylic system which came into it. Second is the whole old concept mm. was uh, you recognize based on record of recovery in the individual bank. Whereas um, uh, there may be cases that uh, other bank has got other information and the project is not really completed, cash flows will not come, so to recognize as NPS, which information is not available to the bank. So auditors in some banks are handicapped in terms of not having full information about that particular borrower vis-a-vis -vis all the lenders. So there is need for some dialogue between RBI and auditors and RBI and ICI. I think Mr. Malagam will provide that valuable link 
Mr. Khan, appreciate you joining us. That's H.R. Khan, the former deputy governor there, reacting to the committee that's been set up by the Reserve Bank and the Reserve Bank statement issued a short while ago saying that it had warned banks 17 months ago about possible misuse of the SWIFT system, and which is exactly what's transpired at Punjab National Bank. But on the investigative front, the big exclusive news break at this hour, the CBI has arrested five more people in this case. This includes Kapil Khandelwal, the CFO of Gitanjali Group, and Vipul Ambani, President Finance at Firestar International. Utkarsh Chaturvedi joins us now with the details. Utkarsh, so five more officials being arrested today. Take us through the details. So, Shereen, if you look at the investigations by CBI, what CBI is doing right now is it's opening the layers. The first day, it was the two Punjab Na National Bank officials which were named by Punjab National Bank. And the biggest uh, reason why CBI went ahead and arrested them was to know the modus operandi, also to realize that what, was there more people involved in this, in this. And you saw a couple of days after, that is yesterday that they arrested three more officials from Punjab National Bank who were helping uh, these two officials. Now what has happened today is uh, they have arrested, now all these five arrests have not been from Punjab National Bank, have been from both the companies, whether it be Gitanjali Gems or Firestar Diamond. So the CFOs, people really in the, in the finance side, so whether it be the VP Finance or uh, the president of the finance group, both from Gitanjali Group and Firestar Group have been arrested. Also the authorized signatories who, whose si signatures were there are also been arrested. Now, uh, you have to see that there have been 11 uh, arrests at this point of time. Now, what CBI will have is from tomorrow, if they get the police custody of both of both these five people, they can actually confront uh, the, P the PNB officials and all of these people and get more information here. You have to realize that the, the two main culprits in this whole issue are not in the country and getting them back will be a big task. So now CBI will have to really make sure that they get all the information from all these people involved and make a strong case to get them back. On the other hand, if you see what ED is, what ED is doing, Enforcement Directorate, is conducting raids every day to make sure that uh, the money has been secured. Mm. So clearly, you have to see that the, we have to wait till tomorrow. Uh, in the police custody, when uh, the when uh, uh, CBI will go and apply for a police custody, the remand copy will give us a lot more detail and further details about on what reasons sure. have these people been arrested. All right, Utkash, appreciate you joining us. So five more arrests, taking the total to 11 now in the Punjab national matter. That's the exclusive news break at this hour. Utkash, appreciate you joining us. Let me very quickly take you through some of the other key developments in this case today. The Supreme Court has now stepped in. Chief Justice Mishra will hear a public interest litigation on this matter this Friday. And as investigative agencies turn the heat on Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi in Hyderabad, over 700 employees of a Gitanjali group firm held protests against the management for not paying salaries. Well, joining us now is the former finance minister, Yashwan Sinha. Mr. Sinha, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You've written a piece today, sir, where you have raised 10 questions that you would like the government to answer. But let me start by asking you whether you believe that this is a matter that requires a probe by the Joint Parliamentary Committee, which is something that has happened in, with scams previously, or do you believe that the multi-agency investigation that is currently underway should take its own course? You know, I used to believe in uh, joint parliamentary committees until uh, <clears throat> I served on the JPC of the 2G scam. And then I lost faith in uh, joint parliamentary committees. And therefore, my suggestion would be that there should be a multi-agency investigation into this scam, which should be monitored by the Supreme Court. That will ensure that the truth comes out and falsehood is eradicated. But why do you believe, Mr. Sinha, that uh, this probe should be monitored by the Supreme Court? Don't you have faith in the investigative agencies that are conducting the probe currently? Why are you asking for a Supreme Court monitored probe? No, I don't. I don't. I'll be quite frank with you. I don't because uh, <clears throat> they, the investigating agencies, the CBI or Enforcement Directorate or Income Tax, they all have become his master's voice. And um, <clears throat> there are many, many instances to show that they are not investigating, in many cases, fairly and squarely. 
Mrs. Sina, are you saying that the investigative agencies are not investing this case fairly? We've seen several raids being conducted by the Enforcement Directorate, by the CBI. The CBI has filed a fresh FIR as well. We've seen arrests being made, judicial custody being extended. Are you suggesting that the investigation in this case, at this juncture, is wanting? In this case also, let me just point out one thing, which I mentioned in my article that uh, somebody has put out the total value of goods seized. Now, there was a social media joke that RBI is still counting the seized uh, uh, demonetized currency. It's still counting the currency. And here, within seconds, the agencies come to the conclusion of the value, regarding the value of the goods seized. Now, who are they trying to help? I have said that ruling party spokespersons are now claiming, what is this 11,400 crore, we already have recovered 5,000 crore or more, and the rest will also be recovered, so what is all this halabaloo about? So who is letting, uh, letting out these figures? That itself shows that there is um, uh, less than... The who who is the enforcement directorate, sir? The enforcement directorate has on record put out the numbers that you mentioned, the numbers that you allude to in terms of the seizures. So why are they putting out this number? What are they trying to prove? Are they going by the listed price of the uh, jewelry, the, the diamonds? Are they going by the purchase price? What, which price are they mentioning? And I, I understand that many of these um, uh, the diamonds are fake. They are artificial diamonds, not natural diamonds. If I hear you correctly, Mr. Sinha, are you suggesting that the narrative that then is being built around the seizures and the value of the seizures is to make it look like the recovery in this matter has happened and hence there is no scam at all? Do you believe that that is the narrative that's being built? Is that what you're suggesting? Ultimately, ultimately, yeah, ultimately, this is what it will lead to. That, okay, 11,400, we don't know this uh, final figure yet, but let's say it was 11,400 crore. So 11,400 crore was swindled, and the equal amount of money or more has been recovered from the assets of the scamsters. So fair and square, um, the whole thing is over. We're completely out of time, sir. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your thoughts. That's the former finance minister, Yashwan Sena, on the questions he wants the government to answer in the PNB fraud case. Let's move to the other big story tonight. Are private hospitals profiteering at the expense of patients? The National Pharma Pricing Authority has analyzed bills from four hospitals in the National Capital Region and has put out a long report. The report claims that hospitals indulged in unethical profiteering and profit margins on certain drugs and medical devices were exorbitant. Let's go across to Ekta Batrana. She joins us with the details. Ekta, what is the NPPA saying? Well, yes, an important and long report which in fact came out from the NPPA where they've analysed four bills from hospitals in the Delhi NCR region on the basic premise of overcharging. The names of the hospitals and the cases, however, have not been disclosed. So what the regulators, for example, have found is that doctors' hospitals prefer to prescribe branded drugs which are not under price control. The drugs which are not under price control, in fact, have been growing at a double the rate that uh, than those drugs which are, in fact, under price control by the NPPA at this point in time. Separately, there have been exorbitant profit margins as well as unethical profit profiteering which has been charged uh, when it comes to basic things such as syringes as well as catheters uh, by the hospital to the patients and overall the patient's expenditure was inflated by around three to four times in cases and patients were not given a choice to procure drugs and devices outside the hospitals. The hospitals in fact benefited the most according to the NPPA vis-a-vis -vis drugs as well as device manufacturers. Overall, they have mentioned that policy intervention is required to address high growth in drugs which are not under price control, as well as requests from some manufacturers uh, in terms of devices have come through for rationalizing the margins that we've seen.
Ekta, many thanks. As Ekta was pointing out in its report, the Pharma Pricing Authority illustrates with examples how certain drugs and medical devices were sold as what they claim is inflated prices. For example, let's take a disposable syringe. The NPPA says hospitals buy the syringe for just 3 rupees but sell them at 35 rupees. The maximum retail price at a chemist is also 35 rupees. So where is the profiteering? The NPPA report says, and I quote, industry in order to get bulk supply orders is in a way forced to print higher MRPs as per requirement. This is a clear case of market distortion where manufacturers after accounting for their profit print inflated MRPs to meet the demands of a distorted trade channel without getting any benefit from this artificial inflation. So the regulator clearly hints at a nexus between manufacturers and hospitals, but I must reiterate, the report has only analysed four hospital bills in the national capital region. To discuss this further, we're now joined by K.K. Agarwal, the former president of the Indian Medical Association, and Chelija Chandra, the former secretary for health for the Delhi government. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, let me start by asking you, uh, you know, the NPPA has put out a fairly scathing report where they are accusing hospitals of putting pressure on manufacturers to inflate the MRP. So they're selling at MRP, they're buying for much lower than MRP because they're buying in bulk for the manufacturers. And they're also, in a sense, saying that, look, the manufacturers are actually not benefiting from the higher MRP. It's the hospitals who are profiteering. How do you respond to that? See, I am going to read out two things. One is Medical Council of India Ethics Regulation 6.3, which says it is not unethical for a physician to prescribe or supply drugs, remedies, or appliances as mm. long as there is no exploitation of the patient. Therefore, it is a responsibility of the mm. doctor to see to it. There is no exploitation of whatever he prescribes Ooh. to. There is a Samira Kohli who decides what uh, who decides what is exploitation, sir? Who, which talks about Mr. Agarwal, who decides what is exploitation? Because the, the NPPA very I'm clearly saying. seems to be saying in its report, the NPPA is saying in its report that just, hospitals just are guilty of profiteering. They are guilty of. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I am. I am saying the same thing. Just listen to me. I am saying there is another Supreme Court judgment which says cost has to be reasonable. You have to, which is reasonable. Uh, mm. The cost has to be reasonable without exploitation. Therefore, if there is a profiteering, it is an exploitation and not warranted and not, and it is not acceptable. Therefore. It, as far as drugs are concerned, government has to come forward and come out with a one drug, one company, one policy. And all the essential items in disposable. So syringe is an essential item. Needle is an essential item. IV set yeah. is an essential item. They yeah. all should be price capped. And that price capped has to be reasonable. I am with you. I am saying whatever is happening is wrong. Delhi okay. government is trying to come out with this capping shortly. And uh, we have asked all the hospitals okay. to do a self-regulation. This types of a profiteering is neither allowed by Medical Council of India nor allowed by the Samira Kohli Supreme Court judgment. Okay, so you're saying that the government should, in fact, bring in price caps when it comes to essential disposables like syringes, etc. And the NPPA report has uh, brought up the issue of catheters as well. But Shailaja Chandra, uh, the NPPA here is saying that, look, we need policy intervention. Uh, the government must act because what they claim is a collusion between hospitals and manufacturers where they claim it's the hospital that's benefiting and this distorted trade channel continues to be perpetuated. You know, what do you believe is the need of the hour today? The need of the hour, and I've been saying it for a very long time, is that you need a medical regulator, whether it is a medical tribunal mm. or whether it is some other kind of a hat that a person wears or a body wears, you do need to have regulation. At this moment, healthcare is being treated as an industry on one side, on the other side, it is being treated perfectly as something which is like a market wholesaler and then the retailer and you just go to the wholesaler in Chandni Chok and get something at one quarter of the price and then sell mm. it in Connaught Place or some other fancy place uh, for four times the amount. That is mm. exploitation, but that is totally permissible under market realities when it comes to everything except health. When it comes to things like syringes, devices, things like that, 
you cannot take the public for a ride. This has to be monitored, this mm. has to be regulated, and there have to be rules and guidelines as to what you cannot do. It's not enough to have something said by MCI. What has MCI done about it? What have the state medical yeah. councils done about yeah. it? What have the health departments of the states done? I don't think it's enough just to quote mm. the rule book. The doctors are definitely doing rule this book. for yeah, profit. Yeah. And it is because it is being treated as an industry. The minute it is treated as an industry, they mm. will do all the things. There is no audit of this kind being carried out. The audit is of a completely different nature. You need auditors who will go into this. I remember getting a complaint that a person had been uh, billed for 64 uh, uh, packets of um, uh, gloves. He said, my wife did not even require gloves to be used on her, maybe on one day in the operation, 64 packets couldn't have been used. And it did turn out that it was some sort mm. of a typographical error. How could this happen? I think this is something serious. A regulator okay. is needed. There are many ways of doing it. Other countries have them. I don't see why we are allowing ourselves to be taken for a ride. Right. Yes. Ms. Agarwal, you know, respond to Shailija Chandra that what has the MCI done? And don't quote me the rule book because, uh, you know, what we're telling you about is the situation that exists on the ground. Now, the government uh, brought in a bill to try and reform the Medical Council of India. That seems to have been put in the cold storage or at least on the back burner for now. Why won't you allow the reform to take place? I think when I was a part of Medical Council of India Ethics Committee, we were the one who took actions against some of the hospitals. And the hospitals went to high court and took a stay that hospitals are not covered under Medical Council of India. Now, at Maharashtra Medical Council has approached the government to allow hospitals to be examined by, medical, by the Maharashtra Medical Council unless the hospitals comes under the preview of Medical Council of India. Even in the National Medical Commission, they are not. Mm. So question is that the Indian Medical Council Act has to be amended, that all the hospitals also mm. needs to be covered under the disciplinary action of Medical Council of India. I agree with you. If the hospitals are not, today there is a high court judgment that says hospitals are not under Medical Council of India Code of Ethics. And that's the reason their ethics are different. They have a business ethics, and medical profession has a medical ethics. Okay, uh, Shaila Chachandra, I'll end by asking you, uh, you know, as I said, that bill uh, was, was meant to be taken up, then there was this strike that was called, it's been pushed on the back burner for now, but do you believe, uh, you know, price cap is the answer even when it comes to not just drugs but even disposables? Yes, I do feel so. I think as far as drugs are concerned, it would not be really in the interests of patients to be forced to take only something that is listed. If there is research and there is a feeling that a person can benefit from the latest drug, I don't think that kind of a cap should be put on drugs. But certainly on devices and on consumables, these gloves and syringes, needles, things which are used on a very wide scale, there ought to be a cap and there ought to be also a system by which you cannot, uh, you know, force a person to buy it from the hospital. If I want to go to the market to buy it at mm. my own risk, I should be allowed to do that. This is very yeah. unfair that you go to allowed the hospital to pharmacy and you're forced to pay the MRP. No, you're absolutely right, and that is something that the NPPA report also points, uh, points to. But this is, uh, as we mentioned, a report that has analyzed bills uh, put forward by four hospitals in the National Capital Region, uh, what the government intends to do by way of policy action is the question that we hope to have answered over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, uh, Shaila Jachandra and KK Agarwal, always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Coming up next, the CNBC TV 18 exclusive. An important part of what my father's doing and what other politicians around the world who've had pretty good success is actually addressing real issues. Uh, All right. and, and tackling them. In an exclusive chat with CNBC TV 18, Donald Trump Jr. defends his father more when we return.
Well, it's time now for us to revisit the big story of the day, the Punjab National Fraud case after a series of raids by the Enforcement Directorate on several of his properties. Nirav Modi, one of the prime accused in the bank fraud, has written a letter to PNB. In his letter, Modi writes that the liability of his group is substantially le lesser than the 11,000 crore rupees that has been reported by the bank. To discuss the contents of that, joining me now is Vijay Agarwal, the counsel for Nirav Modi. Mr. Agarwal, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you know, your client has written this letter to Punjab National Bank saying that it has caused uh, damage to his brand and his reputation. But the fact of the matter is, uh, as we speak, the 11th arrest has been made by the investigative agencies in this matter. Uh, the CBI FIR very clearly points to not just a negligence but also possible collusion on the part of Nirav Modi and his associates and branch officials of the Brady Branch Bank of Punjab National Bank. Uh, how is it that you believe that uh, your client has done nothing wrong? See, the whole case is that it was done without the knowledge of Punjab National Bank. And it was done by one manager mm. who has been made a scapegoat. Please have three facts right. Number one, this branch is not a manager-level branch. It is an AGM-level branch. So that manager, Shetty, is headed by one chief manager and one AGM. This is number one. Number two mm. is that bank has earned crore of rupees of bank charges on these transactions, so the bank knew. Number three, please understand it very, very technically. The money was mm. going from the discounting bank, that is Axis Bank and Allahabad Bank, to the Nostro accounts of Punjab mm. National Bank. From Punjab National Bank, mm. millions of dollars were moving to those suppliers. Everybody feels that the yes. after the LOUs were issued, the money was going from those banks, discounting banks, to the suppliers. No, they never gave the money to the mm. suppliers. They gave it to PNB, and PNB gave the money to those suppliers. So how can these million of dollars move? Mm. So everyone is feeling that, oh, one small manager comes, there is some setting, and he's uh, send swift matches, uh, and he's sending these uh, swift uh, messages. No, the money is moving mm. from the Nostro account. So PNB, for a business risk, it has taken business going bad. It wants to mm. uh, avoid the liability to the co-bankers. That is why this case is on the platter, right? Like in 2G case, some no. existing operator wanted... Now you will not interrupt. In 2G case, some existing mm. operator wanted that Raja should not give new licenses, call rates should not come down. So that is why they created this case. So same way, PNB wants to get away with the liability to the co-bankers. That is why they create this case. And moreover, I don't know where this 11,000 is coming from. I have read the court order. CBI has written to the court that the amount is 6,000 crore rupees. No, the amount may go to 6,000 crore rupees. That is the court order, right? Which I read, I, I got, got to read today because it is Saturday's order. So uh, it was Sunday. So, so uh, I, I got it. I got to, uh, my hands on it today itself. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Ms. Agarwal, let me start by... You've said several things there. So, one, you're saying that Punjab National Bank was in the know of the transactions took place. Of you're course, saying it wasn't just the two branch brass, level, junior brass. branch level officials. You're yeah, saying every happen. top brass of Punjab National Bank knew. Gee, gee, gee. Of course, they knew. It cannot okay. happen. Sec that is, that is, yes. Okay. Oh. Ah. But that Hello? still doesn't... Why is it then, why is it then, sir, that there was no records of this, which is what Punjab National Bank is claiming, <laughs> that these were merely now, entries in the SWIFT system, the they were never there, made as part of the core I, banking I system? I have got the record. I have seen the record myself. There are entries in the dark register. What records have you National seen, Bank. sir? I've seen the, the, the entry, but the, I've seen that we have, the, uh, uh, my client has all the recepted copies. There are dark register numbers, so it is in the books of the bank. The bank has destroyed some documents, some evidences to uh, uh, stay away from the liability. That the investigation, I'm sure that the CBI will do a good job and CBI will uh, fish it out. And then if it was one manager... Vijay Agarwal, you are saying... Yes, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, Mr. Vijay Agarwal. Hmm. Right? One thing, if, if uh, you know yes. uh, one thing, if, if there was only one manager, why have they arrested so many of them? 
if it was one manager in collusion, why have they arrested so many of the bank people? If it was a setting with only one person in the bank, please see you when a journalist does a story, he should, the person does, you should analyze it with the pinch of salt, madam. You are the fourth pillar. Please analyze with the pinch of salt. Public is believing you, whatever you are so saying. We are, so please analyze we, yourself. We, are, then we only have access. We have only access to the in we have only access to the information but that Punjab National access. Bank has put on record that the CBI has put on record. I am asking you questions basis the information that has been put on record. I don't know either. We will try and re-establish a connection there with Vijay Agarwal, the counsel for Nirav Modi, basically saying that uh, just about everybody, the top brass of Punjab National Bank was in the know of the transactions that had taken place, something that we had pointed out, that this had gone through the Nostro account, and hence Vijay Agarwal there saying that this business of Punjab National Bank not being in the know of these transactions, uh, having gone through, uh, is patently false, is what the counsel for Nirav Modi said. He says this is a fraud that is in fact being perpetrated by Punjab National Bank and its management to avoid liability uh, that falls on it. He's also going on to say uh, there that there may have been material evidence that Punjab National Bank has uh, destroyed. We'll try and re-establish contact with Vijay Agarwal, the counsel for Nirav Modi there. Uh, remember. Uh, remember, Nirav Modi, in his letter to Punjab National Bank, has uh, has virtually said that it's Punjab National Bank that is to blame, not Nirav Modi. He says, you've caused uh, great harm uh, to my reputation, to my business, to my brand. The recovery can now not happen because my business no longer exists because of what you've done. And hence, please pay my... Please pay the salaries to, to my people. That's the letter that Nirav Modi has written to Punjab National Bank. The... the well, I, we're, we're trying, but uh, doubt if we are going to get uh, Vijay Agarwal back, at least uh, for now. But that's, uh, that's the comments that are coming in from the council there for Nirav Modi. We are going to take a break. When we return... An important part of what my father is doing and what other politicians around the world who have had pretty good success is actually addressing real issues uh, right. and, and tackling them. In an exclusive chat with CNBC TV 18, Donald Trump Jr. defends his father. More on that when we return.